pressure Pressure This is Andy Tube and I've been uh, working and exploring around on this Singer Model uh, 99K, my latest acquisition. <laughs> and I was um, investigating and dismantling the presser bar system. So that's what this video is going to do. I'm going to share that with you. I'm going to put it back in now and reinstall it into the machine. And then I'll take it out. I'll dismantle it so if you need to ever work on it um, you'll have an idea of what what goes on and what it involves so I've got it all uh, like I said I dismantled it and I've got the parts laid out here and I, I cleaned them and so forth and I'm going to start putting them back in and this is what uh, I'm going to put in first this is a kind of a combination of three parts here. This is the uh, slack thread regulator that, that sits over here and the needle thread comes up under it and goes up to the take up spring. And attached to it is this piece of metal here is a, a timing gauge. And that's one thing I found different in this than the other machines I've done is that the timing marks are not etched into the, the needle bar. They're etched into this uh, needle bar clamp that uh, goes to the connecting link through the, through the thread take-up system. And instead of matching timing marks on the needle bar to the bottom of a bushing you match them to this timing gauge and and I'll get into that in the future but that's what this part is and then this uh, other end of the slack thread regulator has a clamping screw that screws into this uh, presser bar lifting bracket so when you lift the presser bar lifter it's pushing on this uh, bracket down here and that's what moves the presser bar back and forth so that's what I need to get in there first and uh, I've looked at different ways to do it with the needle all the way down or the needle all the way up and I think I'm going to try it with the needle bar all the way down but you have to kind of angle it in the, there's a slot over here for this lifter and this um, mm, I don't know edge or uh, bar off of the bracket also rides up and down in that same slot so that help guides it so it, it's not twisting like this so with the lifter uh, down you have to angle uh, that arm into that slot and you've got to kind of jiggle it and finagle it around to to get it in there and sticking out the side and I, I was fiddling around with it before and I think I got to loosen that clamping screw a little bit because this uh, you know it hits against the casting of the machine and I can't get the angle on the bracket to get it into that slot. I tried just putting the bracket in and then attaching the regulator after and that that didn't seem to work too good. So there, I think I've I think I've got it I've I've got it in there now. Let me get it down to the bottom and see. Yeah. So I've got it through the slot can you see the end of it sticking sticking out here a little bit right 
and uh, I've got to maneuver this now. There's a space in the face or nose of the machine where the thread regulator sits down in and this little pointy bottom of the timing gauge sits down in. So that's why it helps to have the part a little bit loose. And once it's in there now, um, I can tighten that clamping screw up just a little bit, but I don't want to tighten it too tight because I have to slide the presser bar down through the lifting bracket before because then that clamping screw is how you tighten the presser bar in place. So this is a hollowed out uh, presser bar and to put it back in you slide it up through the top kind of bushing here and then you slide it into and through the lifting bracket and then it will go down through a bottom a bushing um, and come out the bottom and I used a little wooden barbecue stick to go in from the top and help me go into the hollow uh, presser bar and kind of get some force on it while I wriggled there we go wiggle the bracket around and now here it's coming out the bottom okay now I'm going to turn the hand wheel so that I lift up the needle bar and the needle clamp um, because what I have to do next is get this thread cutter this is a thread cutter that kind of clamps on to the presser bar and the way it goes is with this kind of curled end facing the end of the machine here and the folded over part facing the hand wheel end and it's a real it's a real tight fit and in pushing that on I pushed on the barbecue stick again up above to get it kind of started and the edge of it you know cuts thread the top edge so you want to be careful there and uh, let's see the other thing I did I think was I held this part with my plier so that I could kind of pull down with the plier while I was pushing up with the thread cutter and wiggle it back and forth and just just to get it on there now I can adjust it later to move it to where to where I want but that way at least I've got it on there because I can't imagine trying to clamp that from the side I think it would just be too hard now one thing that you have to do after you remove the presser bar and put it back is you've got to adjust it for the factory height and to do that you're going to need to have the presser foot back on there and you can do it with any of the presser feet that came with the machine the only thing I got with this was the straight stitch foot but if you had like the hem hammer or something like that it should work too because they're all supposed to work from the same height but most people are just going to have the straight stitch foot so we'll just put that on there and get it nice and firm okay so now I've got that that's a great start okay so I'm gonna take out my little barbecue stick push pusher <laughs> and I'll continue on now uh, the reason that the presser bar is hollow is because the spring goes down in there these two parts are put together at the factory and they kind of stay together when you pull them up pull it out as I'll be showing you later 
and um, this is called an extension pin to make everything long enough it's going to extend from the thumb screw up here down to the spring and you just slide that in from the top like I did the pressure bar up through the top bushing and then guide the spring into the hollow presser bar and then drop it down in there very easy and then the last part up top is this uh, pre pressure regulating thumb screw this is what you turn right and left to put more or less pressure on the presser bar so I'm just gonna brush a little oil on here on the threads and it's it's a solid just has a little kind of cup built into it there so that that extension pin sits up in there you just put it up there and I'll turn it to the right and get it down onto that pin and I'm gonna leave it with very little pressure because I have I have to uh, adjust the height on this okay so let's see how we're doing now yep okay but let's talk about the height of this uh, uh, presser bar now when this is lifted the factory setting is that from the top of the needle plate to the bottom of the presser foot is five sixteenths of one inch, which is uh, when I looked that up, it's seven point nine three something something millimeters, like point nine three two five maybe or or nine nine three three zero in that range so trying to figure something I don't have anything that's five sixteenths high but uh, I looked it up in a, a US quarter dollar a 25 cent piece is 1.75 millimeters thick okay so if I use if I use a stack of four of those that's going to be seven millimeters thick and the factory height is seven point nine three something something so just this will get me with within uh, range of the height and it would be less than one millimeter um, too low if I set it with these. But, but I have a feeler gauge just now that I can use to make up the difference. If I used five quarters, that would push it up just a pinch too high. That would just, just be a little bit too tall over the 5 sixteenth. So now you see why I didn't put much pressure on that thumb screw because I've got to lift up the presser bar and put put this stack under the presser foot. But before I do, I want to be sure that my feed dog is below the height of the needle plate. I don't want it being above the needle plate before I start. So I've got to rotate the hand wheel until I'm sure that those presser feet are below the height of the needle plate. Once I've done that, now I can stick my stack of four quarters in here and get them centered under the the presser foot. Now when when you when you're setting the height on this, the other thing you have to do is is line it up with the feed dog and the slots in the needle plate because you only have the one clamping screw that's going to hold it in place 
so it's not going to do you any good to have the right height and then have it turned because your your fabric will not feed straight through so you have to keep that in mind once you get the height that you want you've got to line it up and keep it parallel with the slot in the feed dogs and I don't know of any way to do that other than just kind of eyeball it you know but let's finish getting the height here so I'm I'm 7.0 so I'm lacking 0.93 something millimeters and if I look at my feeler gauge I have two gauges that are in mine that are side by side and one is 0.45 millimeter thick and the other is 0.48 millimeter thick so if I combine those two that's 0.93 so if I use that then I'm only going to be lacking about a, a 0 0.0025 millimeter so that's close enough for me. I, I'd be really happy with that. So I'm going to put these two feeler uh, gauge blades under the presser foot so my total height will be 7.9300. I'm just, I'm just going to put a rag here so I don't scratch up my paint with this feeler gauge. Now you could disassemble this and take the blades out and just hold the blades but uh, I'm going to lift up that presser bar again and put my blade of the gauge both of them underneath good so now I'm really really close to the factory height I'm at 7.9300 so my height is good and I got my pressure bar lifted because that's what I want to happen is when I lift the, the pressure bar lifter I want the bottom of that foot to come up 7.93 millimeters above the needle plate okay and that's where I'm going to clamp it but just let me turn the machine a little bit here so that I can look at it from the sewing position and I can try and uh, line it up I, I see a line here between the needle plate and the side plate and I see the end of the opening for the feed dog on this needle plate I don't have any seam guide here the etch lines for different widths of seam but I, I just want something to kinda line it up and eyeball it here's a here's a line I can use the opening of the feed dog See if I can turn the back end of that blade a little. And I think I'm I think I'm really close to having that lined up parallel with the feed dog. Looks good to me. I'm going to leave that there and I'm going to come back here now and tighten the clamping screw with the hopes let me use this little lightweight screwdriver first with the hopes of not turning the presser bar left to right and moving that presser foot off of my lineup with the feed dog. See if I can get that level. Okay. Because that clamping screw goes through this. So to tighten 
the bracket onto the bar I'm also going to be tightening the the slack thread regulator so I want it level also it's like a multi-purpose screw isn't it okay that's pretty firm that looks pretty good I'll take my Chapman hollow ground screw bit and and uh, just give it that last little tweak so it's nice and firm okay so I might as well test and see if it still looks good it still looks good to me and and, and I've, I've had a move on me before and stuff and then you just loosen this and do it again and tighten it until you get it right it's really easy to tell if if your foot's not lined up because if you feed a piece of fabric through even without a needle if it goes straight through you're good if it starts veering off to the left or right as it feeds that usually means you got the foot a little crooked so let's lift this up a little and remove my feeler gauge blades and remove the stack of quarters and there we go I think that's really good there should be a little play let's put it down there should be play in this too you see how I can move this a little bit before the presser foot starts to lift like I can move it from there to there there's just free play in it okay and that's what you want if if it ends up that as soon as you move the presser bar lifting lever the whole bar starts to come up you don't have that little bit of play then it's probably not going to end up at the right height okay so having that play is normal and then let's lift it up and I'm at the height let's see if I can put my seven millimeter stack here yep and you see I still have room and I can put my 0.93 combination of blades in there da -da, da -da -da -da. okay so everything I just did you can see you can easily do that you can very easily do what I just did so if you need to replace a broken spring in the presser bar or you want to take it out and clean it or it's at the wrong height or it's not adjusted the foot properly you see how this works and you see how easily you can just go in and, and do it so I'm going to remove this uh, blades now and my little stack of quarters okay that little bit of play looking good now I'm gonna go ahead and and put some normal more normal pressure on there and see how that feels to operate yeah it looks really great that's 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 a nice high um, space under there you know there's a lot of clearance under there I think 5 16 is a is a little bit uh, higher than like even the slantomatic 401 or the Rocketeers because this is like point point three one two five inches and the the slantomatic and the Rocketeers they're like uh, 0.295 to 0 0.30 so this this machine even has a high, this machine even has a higher lift here than the 401a slantomatic or the 500a rocketeer which are well well loved machines you know for people who are into vintage sewing machines anyway just thought I'd mention that and then um, you know it's not uncommon that that spring breaks especially on a well-used machine that's had 
thousands and thousands of this movement going on you know the spring in there can break and one way to tell um, if you do have a broken spring without taking it apart is just back off turn turn the pressure regulating thumb screw to the left so that it's hardly giving any pressure at all see I can lift that pretty pretty easy and then lift up the lever and see okay I just I got a little bit of resistance but not not that much right okay now turn that regulating screw way down to put a lot of pressure on it and when you lift the lever now you should really see a huge difference okay if it's not any harder to lift now or it's only a little bit harder then that's going to be a good time for you to go ahead and remove that regulator and pull out the pin and see if the whole spring comes out so that's how to reassemble it and set the height okay so now i'm going to just quickly show you how to uh, disassemble it or take it out and you just start the opposite way you, you take out the regulating thumb screw all the way right and then you're going to pull up the extension pin and the pressure uh, bar spring that's attached to it and you see I got the whole spring see at the beginning and the end there's kind of like two or three coils close together and then they spread out evenly and I see that this spring has kind of a shiny spot in the middle I noticed when I was cleaning it and that's probably just from where it, it flexes and rubs a little on the side but anyway that is out now okay and let's see what what did I do next I think I would take off the uh, thumb screw and the presser foot and now I've got to I've got to wiggle down this um, thread cutter and oh I, I didn't adjust it before you see it's up pretty high already so I got kind of lucky when I put it up there you don't want it so high that it blocks the bar from coming up and you don't want it too low that it it kind of bothers you when you're pulling your thread and so forth and you can turn it left to right like that you can position it where you want and if you don't use it you can you can pull it off with you want if you want and put it with your attachments and there's some attachments on here like the zigzagger and stuff that they recommend in in that instruction book to turn it way to the left like this so that this uh, swing out part here doesn't bother the attachment that you're you're putting on but anyway I, I've got to uh, wiggle this thing down now and get it off and like I said remember that it's it's you know sharp up here where it cuts the thread so don't um, don't let that get you and it's kind of it's kind of weird to get off and it might be dirty so you might want to put a little oil or penetrate penetrating spray on it it might be stuck on there with old dried up oil but I just took the end of a barbecue stick to protect my fingers and I used it to push down and slide off the thread cutter. Okay. Then the next step is to loosen this clamping screw here so that we can pull the presser bar out. So we'll just carefully loosen that screw a couple of turns. And you see that the slack thread regulator is nice and loose now and you can see that the bar and the bar just pushes up out the top just like that okay 
then what's left here is to maneuver these pieces so you can get the bracket out of the slot on the slide so I do it like that maybe I'll let's see maybe I'll raise that bar up needle bar and see if that helps me sneak by it oh there so I turned it like that and then kind of twisted it out and it came right out okay now as part of this pressure bar system of course is the lifting lever and in the slantomatic and uh, rocketeer models and stuff I did there is a hmm, hinge screw uh, right in here that holds that and you can go in and take out that screw and you can remove this for cleaning if you need to or whatever in this case there isn't a screw and from what I can see you see this um, round silver right here then if I if you go oops if you go to the back back here um, I feel a hole but I don't know that's that I is is a hinge pin so it doesn't screw in I think it's just pressed in and and I think there's a small hole back here I don't know if, I don't know if you'll be able to see it let me get a, let me get my old rusty needle here there's a little hole right there and if you can see where the pin is up here is that showing up you can see they're at the same horizontal level so I think you could put if you had it you could put a small punch in here and you could punch that pin out and then you could remove this but I think I'm just going to clean uh, clean it in place and not mess with that because I've I've just never done that I've never punched out a pin like that, but I've got the feeling that if you needed to or wanted to, that that would be the way. But you need a real small, long, skinny punch back here that you could tap. And then I think that because the pin is smooth, it doesn't have any way to, to grip it, you know. So I, I just thought I'd mention that. If you've seen my other videos, I, I loosen the hinge screw and take this out and clean it and so forth. But I'm not going to take that hinge pin out of this one. So that is, that's it. That's how to remove and re replace, reinstall the pressure bar system on a Singer Model 99K with the extension pin and spring and kind of the combo bracket my other machines definitely had a lifting bracket like that with a nice strong clamping screw that that squeezes the bracket but they didn't they didn't have this this was new to me slack thread regulator and the timing gauge that that is screwed to it a little bit different but that's okay. This is still cute. The Singer Model 99K. Thanks for uh, watching AndyTube. And I hope you'll come back again. And uh, any comment, uh, questions, anything like that are welcome. Take care. Thank you.